up, we are finishing up Unit 2 in AP Precalculus. We're going to talk a little bit about some exponential log stuff. We're going to talk about semi-log plots. The frick is that? We'll find out. Let's talk about two things. The first thing that I want to talk about is uh, logarithmic sine graphs. Now, a lot of times you will be given a problem where you're given that. And you're asked to find out when is this positive? When is f of x greater than zero? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that. This is f of x, and I care about when f of x is greater than zero. Let's get a marker that actually works. So we have log base 2 of 3x has to be greater than zero. Let me scooch that over. Now, what I'm going to do is for me it's difficult to navigate around logs especially if i don't have a calculator on me so what i'll do is i'll take the to the two to the two to where are we at of la if i that's my joke uh if we take two to the of log two two to the log two just gives me whatever's left over here so three x so three x is going to be uh greater than two to the zeroth power wait a minute Two to the zeroth power is just one. So three to the x is greater than one. I have to divide both sides by three, divide both sides by three, and x is going to be greater than one third. Okay, pretty simple. Now with this, I don't have to make a sine graph because I basically just have uh, something friendly like 3x is greater than 1. I don't need to make a sine graph. Now I will later, but this makes sense to me. Logs look like this guy over there. So it would make sense that if this was log base 2 of 3x, which is very similar to this guy, it would cross over at around 1 third. Now here's where you have to be careful, okay? I have to include the possibility of negative values from time to time. Okay, I care about where 3x is going to be positive. So, you know, I don't have to, if x is greater than one third, I don't have to look back in here and say, oh man, I'm really nervous that if I plug in like a negative number, I have a log of a negative. That's not happening here. So later on, we will probably have to worry about what happens if I get a negative value. What do I do then? We'll take care of that. And if for some reason what we do requires us to make a sine graph, like if for some reason this was not, um, you know, as simple as 3x is greater than 1, if it was something like uh, 3x squared minus 27 is greater than 0 or something like that, that's when we would have to use like a sine graph. But we won't do that right now because we're not doing that right now. Other thing that we have to take a look at is semi-log plots. Now, let me move my face. Let me move my face. Did I accidentally just draw? No, I didn't. Now, a semi-log plot takes a log and makes it look straight, like a straight line. We know that if I were to graph this on a regular coordinate plane, 2 to the x, you know, I would get, um, let me see, 2 to the, and by the way, this is exponential. So logs, exponential, it's going to take an exponential or a logarithmic function and make it look like a straight line. So if I were to plug in 0, I'd get 2 to the 0, which is 1. If I were to plug in 1, I'd get 2. If I were to plug in 2, I'd get 4. And if I were to plug in 3, I'd get 8. And then do I have another shot to do one more? Can I fit 16 on here? I can. And so what we get, right, is a very <laughs> steep, a very steep curve looking exactly like that, but, you know, more like that. Now, if I were to graph out on a semi-log plot, you might be looking at that and saying, what, what the heck, what's all these like little lines scooch next to each other? You'll see. If I were to plug in zero, I'd get to the zeroth power, which is one. If I were to plug in 1, I'd get 2 to the first, which is 2, that guy. If I were to plug in 2 to the second, I would get 3, 4. If I were to plug in 3, I'd get 2 to the third, which looks like it's going to be U. And if I were to plug in 4, I'd get 2 to the fourth, which is 16. So here's 10. That would be 20 according to my semi-log plot. That's 20, 30, 40. So 16 probably is somewhere at around there. If I were to plug in 5, I'd get 32. So here's 10. 
20, 30, 32 looks there. So as you can see, a semi-log plot takes something that's a logarithmic function or an exponential and makes it look like a perfectly straight line. I'm not going to draw a perfectly straight line at risk of making myself look even more stupid after doing that right there. But if I were to keep going straight line, straight line, straight line, that's what a semi-log plot does. It takes a logarithmic or exponential function and make it look like a straight line. So what do I do with all this fun knowledge? Uh, I'm going to solve. Now, no calculator, okay, no calculator, but, you know, no calculator needed. I have a base of four and I have a base of eight. What I could do is give both of these a base of two. Okay, so if I wanted to make both of these a base of 2, that would be 2 squared to the 3x minus 3 is going to equal 2 to the 3rd to the x plus 7. Okay. And then you distribute up here. You do, when you have an exponent multiplied to an exponent, you multiply. So that's going to be distributed property right there. So that's going to be 2 to the 6x minus 6. That's going to equal 2 to the 3x plus 21. Now, when you have a base equaling the same base, you set the exponents equal to each other. So I have 6x minus 6 equals 3x plus 21. And now it's an Algebra 1 problem. Subtract 3x from both sides. 3x minus 6 equals 21. Add 6. 3x equals 27. Divide by 3. x equals 9. Okay? Similar with this guy. Now we know a rule that says that log, uh, <laughs> that's an LG, log base B of B to the X allows the Bs and the log to cancel out, leaving you with just an X. So this is what I'm going to do. Uh, log base 6 of, let me see, 36 is 6 squared. So 6 to the 2x equals 4. Hmm. Log base 6 of 6 goes away. 2x equals 4. Let me see, if I divide by 2, carry the 1, multiply by pi infinity, multiply pi infinity, good. Mm, not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. Now it gets bad. All right. Well, I saw a problem like this in slide number two. So LNs, I wonder if I can combine those. Oh, I can. So that's going to leave me with LN of x squared minus 9 over 3x plus 1. And I care about when all of this is positive, so greater than 0. Not greater than or equal to, greater than 0. What I'm going to do is I'm going to e to the both sides. You might be thinking, should we factor that? No. You'll see. e to the both sides. So I'm going to e to the both sides. That crosses that out and leaves me with x squared minus 9 over 3x plus 1 is greater than e to the 0. Oh, that's 1. So greater than 1. Hmm. Oh, I know what I can do. I can multiply both sides by the denominator. Like so. And that leaves me with x squared minus 9 is greater than 3x plus 1. Okay. Let's get this side equal to 0 because this looks like a quadratic and maybe I can solve it. I don't know. Let's subtract 3x from both sides and 1 while we're at it. So subtract 3x minus 1 
and that gets us x squared minus 3x minus 10 is greater than 0. In other words, positive. Uh, ooh, x minus 5 x plus 2. Now this harkens back to unit 1, where I would give you maybe just something that looks like this and ask you to do it. And so what you would do is you would say, well, this is a parabola, look like this. Okay. And I have to find the zeros, which I just found at negative 2 and 5. And so my picture is going to look like this where it's positive over here, it's negative right here, and it's positive over here. So where are my guys positive? Well, the x values that make this positive are less than two and greater than five. I'm sorry, less than negative two, but wait a minute. I can't plug in negative two into here. If I plug negative two into there, that would be three times negative two plus one. Uh, three times negative two plus one is a negative. I can't take the ln of negative. You don't count. I can't count you. So the only numbers that do count are is I, if I plug in five, I could plug in five, five squared minus, I could plug in five. The only numbers that do count are five and above. And if that's the case, you give it to shove. <laughs> Rounding joke. Remember that? Anyway, uh, since it's greater than and not greater than or equal to, I'm going to put five non-inclusive and goes all the way to infinity. That's my domain. Okay. That's my X values that when I plug it in, I get uh, a positive value. Again, you're allowed to plug in five because if I plug in five, that's 14, ln of 14 is legal. That's 25 minus nine, which is 16, ln of 16 is legal. I wasn't allowed to plug in negative two because if I plugged in negative two, neither of these would work. That would give me four minus nine, ln of a negative is not legal, can't do that. Okay, so only you would work. Careful, please be careful, I beg you. Solve the inequality, log base four, of 2x minus 1 is less than or equal to 2. All right, so let me rewrite it out so I have a little bit more space. Log base 4 of 2x minus 1 is less than or equal to, leave some space, 2. Why leave some space? I want to get rid of that log. How do you get rid of that log? Take 4 to the of both sides. That crosses out and leaves me with 2x minus 1 is less than or equal to 16. Okay, add one, add one, cross you out. 2x is less than uh, 17, divide by two, divide by two. x can be less than or equal to 17 over two. Now here is a problem. If I were to just circle that, that's me insinuating that I'm allowed to plug in all these negative values, which I'm not allowed to do. But I'm not also, I'm not just going to say that my guy is between 0 and 17 over 2 either, because if I plug in 0, 0 minus 1 is still not allowed. So what's my domain restriction? Well, I have to make sure that whatever I do, that guy is zero or greater. So if I set u equal to zero, two x minus one equal to zero, add one, divide by two, x equals a half is the minimum value you're allowed to plug in. Okay, so the minimum value I'm allowed to plug in is one half, and I'm putting the little bracket there because of that or equal to. And the maximum value I'm allowed to plug in is 17 over 2 with the bracket as well. So with logs, you just have to be a little bit more careful about domain restrictions, what you're allowed to plug in, what you're not allowed to plug in. Take in the information that you're given. Take that information and say, am I allowed to plug in all of those values? And no. Am I allowed to plug in all of those values? No. Well, if I'm not, what do I do? Take it from there and see, see what you can do. Okay? All right. Fun. 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 
No calculator needed. Oh, and my face fits snugly right there. The initial population of a group of 300 rabbits doubles every month. Neat, those rabbits. Write an equation in logarithmic form that models this scenario for our rabbits and M months. Okay, so this is what I need to do. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start out by writing this out as an exponential function. So y equals, you start out with 300. So, you know, remember exponential form is your initial guy times whatever your ratio is to the x power. So that's your common ratio. That's what you start out with. A is what you start out with. So that's 300. My common ratio is doubles, which means 2 to the x power. That's not what they want. Also, they want me to say R, and by they, I mean me, because I made this problem up, 2 to the M. All right. Write this out in logarithmic form. Okay. Well, if I want to write this out in logarithmic form, first off, I need to get the exponent by itself so I can take the log base 2 of it. So if I divide both sides by 300, I get R over 300 just like the Spartans, equals 2 to the m power. Okay, uh, if I want to log this, which I'm going to do, I'm going to log both sides, and I'm going to make sure I log base 2 both sides. So log base 2, merp, merp, log base 2, merp, merp. Why log base 2? So it does that. And so I'm left with the equation. m is all by itself, so I'll start m first m equals log base 2 of r over 300. Okay. Use the equation to find how long it would take for the population of rabbits to be 2,400. Okay, I can do this. Uh, m equals log base 2 of 2,400 over 300. Wait a minute. 2,400 over 300? Well, that's just 8, isn't it? So log base 2 of 8. Oh, man, I wish I had a calculator. I can't do this without a... <gasps> 8 is 2 to the third power. So I can write this out as log base 2 of 2 to the third power, like so. And log base 2 of 2 to the third power allows these guys to cancel out, giving me just 3. The answer is 3 months. Oh, those rabbits. An outside factor has changed the population so that it triples every 3 months. Okay, so that if it triples every three months, so then I have a new equation. So uh, I start out with 300 anyway. So y equals uh, 300 still. That doesn't change. Uh, triples makes that three. And every three months is not going to be 3m, but m over three. That way, every time I hit a three month, that's when the exponent is taken. It's very backwards looking, but trust me on this one, trust me on this one, trust me on this one. Write a new equation in logarithmic form. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did over here. Um, instead of y, I'm going to use r. So let me quick back that up, make that an r so that it looks better and see what the difference between these two equations is going to be. First thing I'm going to do is divide everything by 300. Divide everything by 300. So I have r over 300 is going to equal, you're gone, uh, 3 to the m over 3. Now I want to get rid of that base the same way I got rid of that base. So I'm going to log base 3 of both sides. Log base 3 of both. That's supposed to be a parenthesis. Log base 3 of both sides. That allows this to cancel out, giving me log base 3 of r over 300 equals m over 3. If I want to get m all by itself, I'd multiply both sides by 3. 
multiply both sides by three and putting this all together, M is going to equal three log base three of R over three hundo. Lots of threes. Is this a calculator problem? No, no calculator, no calculator at all. Uh, why is the data exponential and not linear? Well, what do I do? Do I add by the same number every time? No, I multiply by the same number every time. So this is exponential before, yeah, you know, leave it at that. You multiply everything by three. Okay, that is not going to change. So non-consecutive equal length interval input values. I think I nailed that. E times by three every time. So that's why it's exponential. Okay, you multiply three. Multiply three. Write an equation in y equals a times b to the x form. So exponential form to fit the model. This is what we begin with, and this is our multiplier. A is what we, we, what we begin with at time zero. So when X is zero, Y is four, so A is four. B is our common ratio, our multiplier. So since we multiply by three every single time, I get three to the X equals Y. And if you're a little paranoid, if you're like, well, how do I know it's four and not 12? Just test it out, see what happens. If I plug in zero, I get three to the zeroth, which is one. One times four is four. If I plug in one, I get three to the first. Three times four is 12. I did it right. Okay, now what I have to do is kind of work my way a little backwards. Okay, what is y when x is negative four? Well, y is going to be four times three to the negative four. Or four times one over three to the fourth, or four times one over three, there's nine, 27, 81, one over 81, or four over 81. No calculator needed. We need a calculator for that, come on. calculator again. Uh, oh, same exact data. Okay. Uh, zero, four. So let's graph zero, four. So zero, one, two, three, four, one, twelve. So here's 10. Remember, once I skip up here, I now have 10, 20, 30. So 12 is probably going to be right around here. 2 is going to be 36, so there's 20, there's 30, so 36 is right around here. 3 is going to be 108, so this would be 110, so 108 is going to be like right there. 4 is going to be 100, 200, 324. So just make believe that there's a straight line cutting through all of those. Use that graph to further explain why the data is exponential. Well, I'm not going to write it out because I don't have space, but this data is exponential because when I graphed it on a semi-log plot, I got myself a straight line. And that's what you're supposed to get. If it's exponential or logarithmic and you graph it on a semi-log plot, you're going to get a straight line. If you graph something that is not exponential or not logarithmic on a semi-log plot, you're not going to have a straight line. Simple. Simple. Except that it's very complicated because no one uses semi-log plots. Ah, yes. Now we're finally at the calculator section. So let's kind of analyze, let's deep dive these problems. Uh, I really can't move my face anywhere. Nope, 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 nope. So I'm just going to put you here for now. The table shows the average life expectancies in years of Americans from 1900 to 2010. Use logarithmic regression to fit a model to these data. Let x equals 1900, x equals 2 is 1910, etc. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this into my calculator. 
you're going to be one, you're going to be two, you're going to be three, you're going to be four. And I'm using these guys and I'm going to use what's called LN reg, which is a logarithmic regression model. Well, this is going to be pretty unpleasant. First things first, we're not actually using the years. They want us to use one instead of 1900. And so they're giving us 12 sets of years. So we're going to number one through 12. So we are going to do what's called logarithmic regression. If you didn't see what I did, and if you've never done this before, make sure you hit stat, edit, and then you're going to just type these numbers in as ungodly as they're about to be. All right, so 1900, the life expectancy was 47.3 years. I'd be dead in seven years. I mean, um, 27 years, uh, then 50, then 54.1, 59.7. We're trending in the right direction, 62.9. Uh, 68.2, where are we? We're halfway through 69.7, any typos? Yep, yet, I mean, nope, <laughs> I meant to say yep. All right, and we're moving, and we're moving, and we're moving, and we're moving. All right. Oh, almost, almost blew it at the very end there, 78.7. Okay, so we're going to use a logarithmic regression to fit a model to this data. So the using the numbers that they wanted us to use, and again, three would represent uh, 12 or 1920 or something like that. Oh, we're going to quit out of this. We're going to go to stat. We're going to go to calc. And am I going to need to use this equation later on? Yes. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go to uh, logarithmic regression, which is LN reg, okay? It is LN reg, logarithmic regression uses LN, not log. I'm gonna make sure that when I store my regression equation, I store it in the Y sub one so I can use this later. So I'm gonna go to VARS, Y VARS, function Y sub one, and calculate it. And I get this pretty gross looking equation. So it's gonna look like 42.527, plus 13.858 ln of x. All right, so the equation that I got was y, <laughs> y equals uh, 42.527 plus 13.858 ln of x. And again, I stored that into my uh, y one plot. So uh, I can then answer B, which is use the model to predict the average American life expectancy for 2030. Now I do this in the video, but I'm also very clear that if you're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, then 2030 is going to be 14. So I'm going to make sure I understand that 2030 is when X is 14. And I say that in the video, just watch. All right, now if you remember, I already programmed that into the Y sub 1 part by using the whole VARS thing when I did LN reg. Uh, and I'm going to predict the life expectancy for 2030. Now, since we allowed 1 to be 1900, and thinking back most recently, like tell you what, let's just do this just to be on the safe side. If I go back to my list, we called 2010 12. So 2030 is going to be 14. So if I go to the y equals thing, there's my equation. Graph's not going to help me out much. But what I want to do is if I hit second table, I care about what happens at 2030. So I'm going to go to 14. And at 14, people are expected to be 79.0098 years of age. Hmm. All right, man, people be living up to 80 years old. So we get 79.098 years. Mm -hmm. It's a long life. I don't know if I want to live that long. I mean, <laughs> I, no, I don't want to live that long. All right, next guy. Maybe I can move my face. I can. Another calculator problem. A population of bacteria in a Petri dish is modeled by that equation right there. Very continuously compounded interest formula E. Uh, P of T represents the population at time T in hours. E is E. 
we're going to start out by saying, all right, well, let's have t equal 10. So basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to throw this straight in my calculator, 1,000 e to the 0 0.05, 0 0.05 times t, which is 10. So for this guy, you might remember this looks very, very, very similar to the continuously compound interest formula. And that's basically what this is. This is a continuously compounded change. Okay, it's an exponential function. What we're going to do is we're going to type in the equation, y equals 1,000, e to the is right here, second ln is e to the 0 0.05, which tells us we have a rate of 5%, times x, and if I hit a graph, it's not going to give me anything because of that 1,000. But I don't really care about that. I just care about the population at t equals 10 hours. So if I hit second table, scroll down to 10, we have our guy. Okay, so our population uh, at 10 hours of this bacteria is going to be 1648.721. So the number that I get is 1648.721, but what I don't do a good job is explaining that we're not going to have like half of a bacteria or 0.7 of a bacteria. So we'll round this up to 1649. You're allowed to have a little bit of uh, rounding error as long as it's just by one for AP pre-calculus. It's all good. So how long would it take for the population to triple? Well, I start out with 1,000. So tripling would take me to 3,000. 3,000 equals 1,000 e to the 0.05t. Now let's divide everything by 100, 1,000 I mean. Let's divide everything by 1,000. You get 3 equals e to the 0.05t. In order to get t all by itself, we need to ln both sides. So I'm going to ln 3, and I'm going to ln this e, which it makes it all go away, and leaves me with ln of 3 equals 0.05t. So I'm going to run to my calculator. I'm going to type out ln of 3, get a number, divide both sides by 0.05. That's going to give me my t in time. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do to answer this guy is I'm going to find out what ln of 3 is, if I could just get out of here in one piece. ln is there, so ln of 3 is that. Now, ln of 3 equals 0.05t. If I divide both sides by 0.05, I get my answer, and that answer is going to be, what are we doing, months, hours, 21.972 hours. So since t is in hours, we're going to have 21, which is 9 plus 10. Wow, gross. 21, better looking 21.972 hours. So almost 22 hours. The Taylor Swift special. How relevant, Taylor Swift. Oh, speaking of eagles, Kelsey. Hopefully they're together still. If this video is three years old and you're watching this and you're like, no, nah, they broke up and she already wrote five songs about him. That's a shame. They were a cute couple. Cute couple. Who, where can I move my face? Oh, perfect. Gross though. The Richter scale is a logarithmic scale used to measure the magnitude of earthquakes. The formula to calculate the magnitude M of an earthquake is given by that equation right there where A is the amplitude uh, measured in micrometers, T is the period measured in seconds, A is, I already did that, M is the magnitude, period, and K is a constant that varies depending on the location and the instruments used, whatever. Suppose an earthquake occurs with an amplitude of A equals 100 micrometers and a period of 0 0.5 seconds in a region where K equals 3.5. Find the magnitude of this earthquake. You're just plugging stuff in. You're just going to plug stuff in. M equals log base 10. That's what regular old log stands for, log base 10 of A, which is 100, over T, which is 0 0.5. Figure out what that is, plus 3.5. Type that in your calculator. Be right back. 
All right, so this looks a lot more unpleasant than it really is. All you're doing is just typing stuff in. So don't do anything stupid. Uh, log is log base 10, so log is log. And I have 100 divided by 0 0.5. So we'll just type out 0.5, close that, and then we're going to add uh, 3.5. And that is going to get us 5.8010. That's our magnitude. Magnitude uh, it measured in, I don't freaking know. 5.801. Now suppose the amplitude of the seismic wave doubles while the period remains the same. Calculate the new magnitude. So basically it's the same exact guy. But the amplitude A doubles, so now you're going to have log base 10 of 200 over 0.5 plus 3.5. Let's see what happens there. Now, the only difference between this one and the last one is that I have a 200 instead of a 100. So let's do this little trick. If you hit second... Enter, it brings back all the stuff that we just typed out. So let's go over here and make it a 200 and hit enter. And that's our new value, 6.102. So by doubling what's inside the log for base 10, it doesn't really change a whole lot, hardly at all. And that's because, you know, when you take 10 to the stuff, right, changing the inside by what seems like a lot double isn't going to change the whole thing by a ton. Okay. And all these weird shadows on my face. Oh, oh. No matter where I sit in this classroom, I'm just out of luck. Except for when I teach the students. <laughs> Last problem. Look at that semi-log plot. Ooh, perfect. Use the semi-log plot to write an exponential equation. So I'm going to take these numbers here. I'm going to throw that into my calculator. I'm going to find x, x reg, x reg to come up with an equation. Let's see what that equation is. All right, so this is going to be a mess. A lot of this is going to be estimation, so don't expect perfection here. Semi-log plots are good because they try to make it accurate, but when you get a picture stolen from the internet like I do, it's not going to be super accurate. And what we need to do is we need to turn it into exponential equations by doing exponential regression. So stat, edit, we're going to start out by doing negative two and then work our way up to four, like so. And then it's just a matter of trying to figure out where things are. Now, negative two, I'm going to do this. Negative two looks like 1.4 out of 10. And if you type out 1.4 out of 10, it does the calculation for you. So similarly, if you're looking at negative one, and if you're saying that's a little above the three, so maybe like 3.5, then type out 3.5 tenths. And it does the math for you. Zero looks like it's right on one. Two looks like uh, if you were to, no, I'm sorry, one. I forgot about one. That would make a huge difference. Uh, one is like above two, maybe 2.7. So we'll go with 2.7. Uh, two is like seven ish so seven point we'll make it three because that dot's kind of hovering above three is now like right at 20 so i'll call that 20 and then four is uh, that's the 50s so a little above 50 so we'll say 52. okay now just for funsies just for funsies let's stat plot this to see what it looks like on a coordinate plane to see if it looks log or exponential uh, which is what we want to do. So I'm going to turn second y equals, I'm going to turn the stat plot on, and then I'm going to zoom stat, which is zoom nine, and that looks pretty exponential to me. So let's come up with our equation by quitting out of that. Let's go to stat, let's go to calc, uh, will I need my equation later? Yep, so next part I'm going to need it. So I'm going to do exponential regression. I'm going to make sure that I store my equation into y sub 1 by going to vars, y vars, function y sub 1. 
when I calculate it, I get gross. But you know what? Oh, man, that is awfully close to one. Awfully close to one. I just missed it, though. Um, so I will have the equation uh, y equals 0 0 0.994 times 2.7019, and that's awfully close to e, uh, 2.7019 or 702 uh, to the x. Y equals 0.994 times 2.702 to the x power. Friends, even though I didn't say it, and even though it's not what we did, using the numbers that I chose, what we basically got is this is basically the same as this. Now, don't do this. Although I'm allowed to because I created the problem. This is the same as y equals 0.994 if I'm estimating is one. 2.702 is awfully close to e. So this is basically y equals e to the x. Isn't that neat? Now, I'm not going to use that. In fact, what I did is I programmed in my calculator that it would go automatically to y sub 1. So I'm still going to use these values right here. But that's what this is. Now you know. <laughs> Isn't that neat? Isn't that great? So much fun. Use this equation to predict the output when the input is 10. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that equation right there. I'm going to let x equals 10 without having to type that whole mess in. All right, now that I have that, I can see what happens when my input is 10. So I'm going to go to graph. There it is. I'm going to go to trace. Uh, if I can hit it again, second table, not trace. Go down to 10. Ooh, see what number that is. 20602.094. So this ended up being 20602.094. Yuck. Rewrite A, the red part, as a logarithmic function. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to, oh man, I wish I could use E. I wish I could use E. I wish I could use E. Oh, should I do it? Should I do it? I'm going to do it. I'm using this equation. I'm using this equation right here. Try and stop me. It's my video. I made it. Y equals E to the X. Okay, I'm going to write that out as a logarithmic function. Well, all I have to do if it's y equals e to the x is I can just ln both sides. Yeah, I can just ln both sides. And what that does is it cancels that out and lets that be x equals ln of y. Finding Dory ln degenerous. And I'm done. So uh, that wraps up the chapter. Make sure you watch the other videos to get you ready for this chapter test, whenever that is, if your teacher is going to do that. But uh, yeah, lots of logs, lots of exponential stuff, some semi-log plots. Very strange, very strange, but a lot of fun. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Love you all. Mm, bye.